Alrighty, next question. Now, this is a two-part question. Uh, another client of mine, Chris Donahue. How can weight fluctuate so much during sleep, as in one to two pounds? That's part one. And then part two, is there any way of knowing when you're burning muscle weight as, a far, as opposed to fat weight? So the first one, uh, being a, a former wrestler, I know you're a boxer, so that's kind of why this is relevant to you, but being a former wrestler, um, having to make weight in the morning, you'd always want to be about a pound, pound and a half away from your, your, your weight class because you'd know you'd lose that in sleep. Uh, a lot of it is when you first wake up, I do, I think most everybody takes a leak, that's a lot of weight, but not including that, you're going to sweat a little bit, you're, you're going to sweat during the night, um, just your basal metabolic rate, just laying there for eight hours, you're going to burn calories. I mean, that's just, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. um, so those things combined, I think the most of it is probably um, just a combo of sweat, so that perspiration, fluid, um, and then just your basal metabolic rate, eight hours of sleeping, you're going to burn calories, you're going to need calories to, to survive. So even though you're not moving, you're still burning calories. I think people sometimes lose uh, thought of that. Uh, and then the second part, uh, how do you know when you're burning muscle as opposed to fat? Uh, a lot of that's just going to be how you're looking. Um, but, I mean, there's, there's a ton of different ways to determine that. Um, as you're dieting, you can look at, um, I mean, you can get your body fat tested and you need calipers. Or if you have a, uh, like, anything more advanced, uh, like... Bod pod. Bod pod or something like that available. I know most people don't, but I'm just, you know, using that as an example. Uh... That's one way. Again, just look in the mirror, take pictures. I have all my clients every single week when they send me an update, they have update pictures, and then I'll save them so then you can kind of look and then compare week four to week one. Uh, and then another great, the, probably the number one way, and I tell my clients this, is your strength. Performance. <laughs> Performance. I mean, if you are, <laughs> a lot of it, you know, in the beginning of a diet, people automatically be like, damn, I've just lost 20 pounds on my bench press. I'm like, all right, that's in your head. <laughs> you're, you're not going to lose 20 pounds on uh, a lift in two weeks. But I'm, I'm talking more over time. Um, if you're eight weeks into a diet and you've lost a ton of strength, all right, you're losing muscle. So, you know, that's the performance is the, the number one way to look at that. Anything to add? Uh, what was the first question again? As uh, the as, first oh, question sleep, was sleeping sleep, okay. and losing weight. Um, people have to realize, um, especially this put in the bigger picture for me, um, there is tracking devices out there such as a body bug or a body media fit. I used one for a month just to see, you know, what my BMR is, how many calories I burn doing, say, 30 minutes of cardio, 60 minutes of cardio, weight training sessions. My average just laying on my ass was almost 90 to 100 calories an hour. So if you sleep 8 hours, that's almost 800 calories. So there you go, that's almost 800 calories, put that into perspective. If you go to the bathroom a couple times in the night, there may go some water weight, all right? You sweat, there goes some more water weight. So there can show fluctuations. As far as on the scale goes, many factors. What was your water intake like the day before? How much sodium did you have? You know, think about if you go eat a Chinese meal loaded with sodium. Your weight's going to skyrocket. That's an obvious. When people have cheat meals, you know, that implement them on your diets, they may wake up and see the scale just go absolutely flying. There's your sodium. So don't let these factors get into your head and, and realize the caloric intake over the day is more important than what you do read on the scale and what you look like in the mirror. As far as the second part of the question, what was that? The second part was um, how do you tell the difference between when you're losing muscle as opposed to fat? Muscle and fat, again, key things. Performance in the gym, all right? Are you losing strength? If you're losing strength, most obviously you're going to slowly start into losing muscle. Um, prolonged dieting, as we touched upon in the previous questions, um, that's going to definitely catch up to you, especially being someone who's competed in two shows, um, 2010 and 2012. I know that my first contest prep I dieted for too long, and in the end I started losing strength. But when my caloric deficit was a lot smaller, my second go around for collegiate nationals this last past year, three months ago, I kept my calories a lot higher. My strength barely dropped throughout the entire prep. It made for a much easier prep, and I was came in and looked a lot fuller on stage. So... Key things to take away from here, a slower deficit, a, a modest deficit, not real big, the larger, the more you're going to risk muscle loss. Performance in the gym, overall mood and energy I would say would be key factors as well as far as losing muscle and again looking in the mirror as Kyle said.